Joining us now, great to welcome on our book talk segment, man has written a very fascinating book, maybe a little uh, nerve uh, rattling as well. It's called Three Minutes to Doomsday, an agent, a traitor, and the worst espionage breach in the U.S. history. We're joined today by uh, Joe Navarro. He is a uh, special agent, a former special agent with the FBI uh, in counterintelligence for 25 years, and it's about his experiences uh, doing an interview with, uh, well, we'll find out about it, with a very uh, interesting man that uh, had a lot of information, and Joe joined us by telephone today from uh, just up the road in Tampa. Joe, good to talk with you. How are you? That's great to be here. Yeah, I had a chance to, to read through the book, and uh, I've always kind of been fascinated by the whole espionage thing. I guess everybody is in a sense, but uh, you really lived it. Uh, it, it even took a toll on you, too, right? Physical toll. Yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was in the middle of it all, and, you know, the book's really about the experiences of what it's like to be an FBI agent. Uh, I worked with a, with a group of really dedicated folks, men and women, who uh, for about 10 years dedicated themselves to, to one thing, a case. Uh, involving a spy, and, uh, and it, like anything else, it, it took emotional and uh, and a physical toll on me. This uh, person you interviewed, I guess, was it 41, 42 times? Uh, he, he had information on uh, something you had to get out of him in order to find this other person, right? Exactly right, Doug. It was, uh, his name was uh, Rod Ramsey, and he was a, we, what we thought at first was a witness to something that had occurred in Germany. And as it turned out, um, he was more than that. He was, uh, he had been involved in espionage, and it was a matter of teasing out of him information regarding the, the, one of the worst espionage rings in American history. And it, you know, for those in the area of, uh, Tampa, Sarasota. It happened right here. That's what made it even more interesting to me. As we mentioned before we went on, I lived up there for about five years. And of course, we all know it's a military area, you know, the, uh, the McDill and all that. But uh, you don't really expect uh, uh, espionage to, to be part of it. But, but it is, or has been. <laughs> hey, you're exactly right. You know, Florida attracts uh, a, a lot of great men and women. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, every once in a while, uh, uh, Spies do make uh, their way here, and uh, this was such a case, and it was just uh, an, an accident that uh, you know I got the ticket on this case to to look into this matter. Was that just luck of the draw that that, that you got it, or uh, how did that work? <laughs> well, it was exactly that. I uh, the agent that was going to get this case uh, was on leave, and so. You know the uh, the teletype had come in and said, "Go go out and talk to Rod Ramsey. He lived uh, and uh, and just see what he he knows." I never expected to uh, un uncover a spy. And he was a unusual character, just from what you describe it in the book. Had a very uh, or a high IQ. I guess they said the second highest IQ ever recorded uh, by the U.S. Army. Is that right? Yeah, it was. You know, they don't tell you this <laughs> up front. No. And, and in, in investigation uh, unfolds, um, and we start digging into this uh, this this individual, and the the reader will uh, will be able to pick up on on the body language that uh, that led us to become suspicious of him. He scored the second highest score ever registered in the uh, U.S. Army I IQ test, and uh, which which made him really a, 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 an interesting individual to interview, but also a very dangerous interview. Uh, person to interview. Almost like a James Bond villain in a sense, although it was real. <laughs> you, know, you know, in a sense, he, he had, first of all, he, he clearly he had intellectual uh, advantage, but he also had the advantage that, um, and most people don't think about this, the evidence in an espionage case is now in the hands of our enemy. And um, they're not going to come forward and share what they know. And and it took place overseas, so that um, Ramsey felt that he could get away with this since the evidence wasn't here in the United States. And this, as you said, took uh, a course over what forty one, forty two different interviews. Basically, uh, what Orlando area and some hotel or motel. A lot of them took place. Yes, I mean the the interviews. Started here in, uh, in in Tampa, mm -hmm. actually not far from the airport, and then uh, uh, they proceeded. He 
he went from Tampa and was working as a cab driver in, in Orlando. And so if you've ever been on International Drive, sure. um, it, what the reader will find interesting is because it, 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 a lot of it happened here, um, they, they'll they know the, the locations in Tampa and, and Orlando where uh, these things actually took place. We won't give too much away. I want the readers to read about it, but you really get into some great descriptions, almost uh, a word for word uh, of the interviews that you did. I mean, uh, going back over it later on must have been kind of interesting for you, but uh, to have that kind of detail, I know you probably took notes, but a lot of it you had to just take from memory, I would think, right? Well, you know, I, Doug, I wanted the reader to, to see what it's like if, what if they had been there in the interview yeah. uh, to sit side by side with an FBI agent and have a spy uh, right there? How do they think? How do they talk? What do they feel? So I tried to do my best to, to get them in there, and um, I was I was fortunate in in my recollection of uh, of everything that uh, that took place uh, enough to where the the bureau actually approved. Um, you know, publishing the book. And as I mentioned at the top, uh, you're an expert in, in uh, the body language. You're part of the uh, behavioral analysis program. So, uh, as you said, you can learn a lot uh, just by observing, and, and you did, right? It was kind of a, a little facial tick or something initially that, that gave you the clue that he had, had some information? There was there was some of that. Um, there was this nervousness and tension. And, uh, I mean, you've done thousands of interviews. You know that you can pick up a lot from the voice and inflection. But when I mentioned the name of an individual that had been arrested in in Germany. Uh, Ramsey's uh, reaction to that, he was smoking a cigarette, and it just shook in his hand. Right. And and that shakiness, every time I mentioned that, that person's name, it, it was almost like watching the needle on a polygraph exam, and, and I thought, you know, there's something wrong with this uh, individual and their relationship together. One of my favorite shows is Criminal Minds, which is kind of based on that unit. I don't know how accurate it may be, but it's entertaining. I, I guess they use a lot of what you guys do in the field, right? <laughs> Actually, you know, Doug, that, that show is probably the closest to any show that, that I've seen to to what it's like to to be in one of these behavioral units that looks at human behavior and gives you an understanding of you know uh, why people do things and how you get inside their heads and uh, uh, and it was very much like that so if you're into that the CSI the uh, <laughs> the behavioral stuff um, this is it and if you're into body language or espionage the the book has it all. The only thing is they solve their crimes in 42, 43 minutes. It took you a little longer to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, Doug, I wish it, 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 it had taken only a, a little bit. I, you know, by, by uh, every account, I went back and talked to some of the agents that were involved with me on this because the, the story is their story, too. And we all thought, well, you know, this will be over in, in weeks. Nobody thought that uh, this would go on for uh, nine, 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 nine years, uh, seven months, so almost ten years. And as we said at the end of the book, you talk a little bit of how it kind of uh, just almost exhausted you for, for a while. And you're doing okay now, I guess, right? Sound like you're doing well. Yeah. No, no I'm, I'm I'm doing fine. You know, it's, it's like any task. Um, this one was was one that really um, um, worked uh, mentally to to wear me down because there were so many obstacles, there were so many things that had to be done. Um, we we needed to put a case together that could stand up to judicial uh, scrutiny. We we wanted to prove our case in court. And I, you know, working 16 hours a day for a very long time, it finally just uh, wore me out. And, you know, the, the body is willing, uh, or the, the, the mind is willing, but the, the body eventually uh, gives, <laughs> gives up. And, and it's a good reminder that, you, you know, as an agent, uh, you, you also need to take care of yourself as you, uh, you engage in these, uh, these investigations. Sure. Well, the name of the book is Three Minutes to Doomsday. We've been talking with uh, Joe Navarro today. Joe, I'm just looking at the notes here. We may have talked uh, back in 08 when you had that other uh, What Everybody is Saying book. I'll have to check the uh, archive. I believe we talked before, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I, we, I think we, we, we did. Uh, what Everybody is Saying came out in 08 yeah. and uh, became an international uh, bestseller. And, uh, and, you know, and this book has a lot of that 
body language uh, that we use to uh, to detect uh, deception. And uh, I hope the reader will enjoy it. Do you have a website, uh, Joe? You want to direct people to? You know, I would just encourage people to uh, to go to Amazon or their local uh, booksellers. If uh, if you just ask my name, Joe Navarro, uh, online or or with booksellers, they can find these uh, these books for you. Great. Three minutes to doomsday. The name of the book, Joe Navarro, has been our guest. Joe, uh, hopefully we can meet in person someday. You're up the road a bit uh, when the next book comes out. But uh, if not, we'll do it on the phone. And uh, thanks for being with us today. Doug, I'd love to. Thank you very much. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.